Welcome to the Hardcore MBA Podcast with your host, Erland Bakke. Would you like to have a free copy of the number one international best-selling book, Never Work Again? All you have to do is rate, review, and subscribe to Hardcore MBA Podcast on iTunes and email us a screenshot of your review to Erland at MrOutsource.com. Hello, Erland Bakke here, signing in from a telephone booth in the Virgin Money Lounge in central London. I am here working on an event I'm doing this weekend, and I'm very, very excited about that. But what I'm even more excited about today is having Tor Refsland on the podcast here. He's also part of my Sumo Mastermind group in Oslo, London. Uh, not Oslo, London, Oslo, Norway, <laughs> my mistake. And uh, he's all about how to work more effectively, how to be more efficient at what you do. And he actually left his six-figure job to blog full-time and makes money online living the freedom lifestyle. He consistently interviews you know, leading personalities and has thousands of shares of everything that he produces on his blog. So I wanted to hear more about how he actually uh, made that happen and why he decided to move from his safe, secure job in one of the biggest companies in Norway and start his own company. So Tor, welcome to the call. Thank you, Erland. It's an honor to be here. And Tor, uh, that's the same name as one of the Norwegian gods, of course, uh, yes. Tor with the <laughs> hammer. Uh, my brother actually has the same name, um, so it's a great name. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so you, you were working in a job, and then what happened? Yeah, so uh, the short version is that I was working as a SAP system administrator for one of the biggest companies in Norway. And I was working very hard toward becoming one of the youngest leaders in the company, but then something happened. So I was on vacation in Turkey, and actually I almost died by falling 393.7 feet into a certain depth while I was paragliding. So it was a huge wake-up call, and after that I started to review my life and decided that I needed to do some major changes. So I had been working my butt off, for about two decades helping business owners and shareholders to build their dream. And it dawned upon me that I might as well do the same for myself. So I decided to leave my six-figure job in order to follow up my passion to help online entrepreneurs to save time and achieve goals. And so that was the, so when you came home, you, you just had this experience. Was it like an immediate thing or how, how, how long did it take? Uh, it, to make the change to quit my job or to plan yeah, my to, new business yeah like when did you go like this is this is it uh, i had actually been uh, uh, been uh, thinking about it for a little bit that i kind of i, I was kind of uh, do, doing a great job in the company but it kind of didn't kind of uh, I didn't have any passion for it to help like people uh, with their IT problems. It's probably okay, but it's not something that kind of gets me up every morning and like, yes, okay, today I'm going to fix someone's computer issues. So uh, it started after that uh, incident uh, when I was almost dying and I had to really just start to find out what I was going to do, and I was actually reading uh, the book, I think it was uh, Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk, and he was talking a lot about uh, to have like real passion for what you're doing and to just, to just like hustle like crazy, so it was a big part of me doing what I did. And do you feel like you, you've always had like the, um, you've always wanted to start your own business, or is that something recent? I think it, it probably uh, kind of I started to think uh, about that for about five years ago. But before that, it was more like okay, I just wanted to uh, work for uh, become one of the CEOs in a big company. But then, when you kind of start to get closer to your goal, you kind of stop, and then you start to observe uh, the people around you. And I was looking at my. My my leader, my 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 team manager, and uh, she was like working insane amount of hours. And then I was looking at her uh, manager again, and he was like just like working crazy. So I was starting starting to think, okay, if I follow this path, I will kind of 
look like them and earn what they are earning and work as much as they are were working, but mm. also having like the same amount of stress. And I was like, okay, it is. It's not worth it. Actually, my brother had this, uh, a very similar experience. Um, he was working at Lehman Brothers when Lehman Brothers still existed um, mm. in New York. And he remembers sitting across from one of the partners, which was like 20 years older than him. And he looked about 40 years older than him. And he just kind of realized that, you know, I do actually, I, this is not what I want. I don't want to be this person. I don't want to be at work 12 hours a day. Um, you know, that's not really what I want out of life. So now he's a professor uh, at a university in the U.S. And, uh you know, professors actually get some time off, like a lot more time off, and they can manage their schedule themselves. I mean, just a lot of pressure and stuff. But he he also um, had that realization, but sort of future forecasting. But it's actually uh, modeling, right? You look at somebody and and uh, look at their life and and yeah. ask them, you know, are you happy? And then you can, you know, that if you follow through that, their if you go follow through the same path, you'll probably get more or less the same result. Um, so in terms of blogging, why did you choose blogging as a vehicle? What do you, what do you really enjoy about time management, um, and, and, um, eff- being effective? Well, so regarding the blogging question, I, I was kind of doing a lot of uh, research, uh, before I started because I like to kind of be prepared. So I was following some of the biggest names in the industry and I was taking a lot of courses to, to learn from the best. And the, the reason I chose blogging is that uh, I think it's an excellent platform to kind of build your name and create awesome content for your readers and then being able to kind of, uh, yeah, uh, to help a lot of people uh, done the right way. And, um, and, and why, why efficiency, why time management? Uh, to, to be quite honest, uh, okay, <laughs> I would just uh, just to say it like it is. So, uh, like uh, when I started, to, when I was planning that I was going to start a blog, I, I was kind of uh, in the situation where most people who have a blog was in the start, like they're like clueless what they are going to talk about. And for my part, I have like a really big passion when it comes to. I think it's really cool, like. Uh, love uh, marketing and how to engage people and like promotion and uh, building businesses and that kind of stuff I like it, it's so extremely cool and that's kind of like uh, yeah, I kind of breathe for it with every fiber in my body but that being said uh, I don't want to be one of those guys like oh I'm going to learn you how to start an X amount of dollar business and then you have it done it yourself so I had to choose a field which I am really good at and that just happened to be like time management and productivity and yeah, reaching my goals. And uh, what, 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 um, <laughs> what, who were the people that you, uh, that you looked to um, when you started uh, researching how to make money online and, and who, who made the biggest impression on you? Yeah, in the start, I... I been going through like a lot of names like the Frank Curran, Jeff Walker, Ben Boschold, Yaro Starak, John Morrow, like uh, Rich Sheffron, like all the top dogs have been kind of go following them and going through their a lot of their stuff. So uh, yeah, uh, I kind of uh, yeah I kind of uh, did a lot of research be- before I started. Mm. And when did your blog go, go live and what was the, uh, did you have like a launch strategy for that? Um, how, how's that, what, what was that process for you? And to be quite honest, in the start I was totally clueless. So uh, there, were, there was uh, no launch or anything strategic about that. I just had to kind of uh, yeah, just hustle and get out there. So I, I think I officially started the blogging full time was in the middle of December last year. And uh, then it just uh, yeah started to take off after a while. So what's what's the most popular uh, blog post so far, and and what why is it the most popular blog? Uh, the, uh, my most popular blog post is uh, 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 what was it called it was uh, uh, eighty productivity uh, eighty 
tips from eight productivity tips from uh, insanely busy, ex- incredible busy experts, I think it is. Mm-hmm. And it has about uh, 1,400 shares. Right. And uh, 60, 76 comments, and it generated about 20,000 page views the first six days. Wow, that's amazing. That's really good. So, but what was the underlying strategy? Like, how did you get those shares? Yeah, so basically, what you have to do, you have to be strategic. So, uh, uh, if you think about you, if you want, like, an, if you want an influencer, to share, you want them to have a good reason to share it, because if not, they, they won't share it unless you know them really well. So uh, a very good incentive is actually to feature them in your blog post, giving them a backlink. And uh, what's even better is that if you actually ask them a question, so they give a contribution. So what I did, I picked them. Um, since I'm in the productivity niche, I was asking a lot of entrepreneurs, including yourself, Erland, uh, what is your, the best productivity tip that you use in your business? Mm-hmm. It's like simple and it's something that like everyone can relate to. So I just interviewed like, yeah, it was obviously eight experts and just put them into a blog post and yeah, was working it to let, make it look good and everything like that. And then that when I launched the, the blog post, I promoted it to all of them, including yeah other people in my network. Yeah, I think that was a really, really smart thing to do. And you, you weren't really asking um, a, a, you know, a lot. You were just asking for one tip, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, personally for me, like I like being featured – as an expert, and also um, being featured alongside, you know, many other prominent names. For me, that was like cool, and I, and I didn't have a problem sharing that because it was a qu- high quality article. Thank you know, you. it was an article that I knew other people would benefit from. Um, so I didn't have a problem with sharing it. Um, what are some of the other strategies that people can use to um, to connect with experts and to uh, to get more traffic to their blog? So first, I would say when it comes to uh, connecting with experts like uh, influencers and experts online, they are like just normal people, just very busy, but they are still like normal people. So the best way is actually to find a way to connect with them, but without asking for anything. So like a success principle is to always give before you ask, but it's uh, when it comes to, to influencers, you have to kind of give a lot of uh, value without expecting anything in return. So an uh, example on that would be, for instance, that um, let's say I was visit you. You are an influencer, and I was like a total greenhorn just starting my blog, and I wanted to connect with you, Erland. Mm-hmm. I would go to your uh, your social media profile, and I will find your your blogs, and then I would search around there, and if I, for instance, hit uh, uh, click a link, which is uh, an error page, 404 error page, I would send you an email, just like, heads up, hey, Erland, I like your blog, by the way, uh, just a quick heads up on this link here, it's an error page, uh, have an awesome day, best tour. That's yeah, it. Yeah. So you're, you're basically um, trying to trying to help them in some kind of way. Um, yeah. yeah. You have to you have to kind of uh, stick out from the rest of the crowd and not kind of be be like a schmuck who just <laughs> kind of w- wants something because you have like you have like the people who gives a lot of value and you have the people who kind of uh, demands a lot of value without uh, kind of having like any reason why they should get that kind of value. So it's more like. Networking with people online is really quite easy if you know how to network with people in real life. So if uh, you and me met for the first time uh, at a party, I wouldn't ask you to, if I could like uh, get a bear or two from you. I would start to talk to you and uh, be genuinely interested in who you are and what you do. And then I would start to think, okay, how can I help you? Mm, mm. 
Why do you think people, uh, why do you think most people ask, you know, what's in it for them? Can I get something out of this? Like, w- w- especially in, in like entrepreneurs, um, they, the, 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 the typical entrepreneurial startup person will be quite focused on themselves. Like what's in it for me and what can I get out of this and, um, go down that route. Why do you, why do you think that? I think, to be quite honest, it's it's in the human nature to be selfish. <laughs> it, it's it's just the way it is. So, like most people think, like what's in it for me all the time, and uh, sometimes I do too. But at least when it comes to business, I try to kind of think uh, long term, like Sig Sigler said, uh, when you help enough people to get what they want, Mm. you will finally get what you want. And that is what it's all about. It's like just giving an awesome amount of value constantly and just like uh, hustling like crazy. And when you don't have uh, more energy and your uh, your, uh, forehead is about to kiss the floor, (laughs) you just have to try to keep on hustling because that is how you kind of build your brand fast and that is how people notice you. If you are a really giver and you kind of, just really passionate about helping other people. And if uh, some of the influencers uh, help me in the future, it's, it's cool, but uh, I don't really care about it when I network with them. This podcast is brought to you by MrOutsource.com. Outsourcing to the Philippines done for you. I, I love what you said about, you know, if you can find a way to help enough people, you know, they'll, you'll be rich, basically. Um, yeah. you'll be one thing is certain um, you know you you'll be fulfilled like if you if you help somebody else out like you know give them your book or you know anything uh, yeah. f- first of all that makes you feel fulfilled which is you know makes you feel happy which is being wealthy is more than just monetary right you want to yeah. put you want to put some cash in your fulfillment box in your happiness yeah. account and, and all these things and and um I mean that's that's pretty much why I I, I started um, you know this podcast and and do seminars and and wrote my book and and it was a genuine it came from a genuine place of like oh I actually want to help people um, I think up until that point um, I was quite focused on you know how much money can I make and what's in it for me and stuff like that um, of course not all the time or else I wouldn't be making any money but um, definitely predominantly focused on that area for too long. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, if you're at a party, then, you know, give somebody a beer, you know, if you want to be invited to cool parties and invite somebody else to a party, you know, have a party yourself, that's fun. And you'll be invited to fun parties. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's doing that initial action first, like do something for somebody else first, and you will be rewarded with it. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but like it works. Absolutely. It, it works like a charm. And that is also the mindset of successful people. Like for another instance, it's like uh, all successful people either have or they at least had a mentor or several mentors. And the same goes when you're out networking with people and uh, you find a person who is really knowledgeable in one area and you just start to connect and then you're just like, polite and show, showing that person that you're kind of uh, you're not a talker you actually do the work and then you're like a real a real hustler doing like working your <laughs> like crazy in order to help your dreams and if it's a match and if they are kind of like in the the right mindset they will kind of uh, look at you as a younger version of themselves mm. and they don't have any problem helping you as long as you are kind of polite showing them that you are like you're one in a million and that you're willing to actually work like crazy in order to get success and then they're always also thinking like okay this uh, Erland guy for instance he's like he's like you're going to hustle like crazy and he's going to have success anyway so I might as well just like give him a point or so too absolutely so what is your big goal with with the website what's your what's your overall strategy with with uh, what you're doing you've been going now for um about six seven months am i right six seven months uh, about uh, nine months now oh sorry, nine months uh yeah. so what is your what is your like uh, overall goal uh, what do you want to be in like five years three years uh with what you're doing uh, uh- 
It's a good question. So right now I'm uh, uh, doing a blog post, but then in a few weeks I will be starting my own YouTube channel, which will be focusing on serving online entrepreneurs one easy applicable productivity tip each week. Because people nowadays have so little time in their lives and that is why my videos will last uh, maximum two minutes and only contain one productivity tip that is easy to implement. Mm. And uh, after I'm going for uh, YouTube and uh, launching that channel, I will be doing it probably more like what you are doing, Erland, uh, writing a book and uh, doing probably some speaking in the future. So my goal is actually to, to be like, uh, yeah, like a mini Tony Robbins in uh, time management and productivity. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So like, um, uh, you know, the, the new David Allen kind of guy. Yeah, for instance. Yeah. So, um, so you're doing basically, you're doing the sort of information marketing model. Uh, I see you've got an opt-in uh, email on your website uh, yeah. where you offer insane productivity hacks, yeah. uh, like, a, like a white paper uh, on that. Um, so how, how, is, how, how do you feel like the opt-in rate is and, and uh, why have you chosen the uh, opt-in box that you have on your website right now? Yeah, good question. So I've been uh, uh, talking, uh, I've been sparring a lot with some of my coaches. One of them is Sue Ann Dunleavy from Successful Blogging and also, of course, John Morrow and Yoro Starak. And uh, the thing here is that a lot is about testing. So, But basically what I did was that I knew that John uh, Morrow's op uh, feature opt-in box, the opt-in box at the top of your screen, which is your kind of prime... Um, prime uh, uh, landmark uh, on your blog that is worth the most because that is what people will see when they arrive at your blog. So Derek Halpman from Social Triggers, I think he was the one who invented the uh, feature opt-in box. And then I looked at John Morrow's website, the uh, Boost Blog Traffic, which uh, he has like, I think it's 52 uh, headline hacks, which is converting very well. So I basically took what was actually working and just like uh, modeled uh, how he had his part, and I just like tried it out, and I did this. I actually have two opt-ins uh, on the top. One is for productivity, and the other is a goal-setting course. So if you go on the goal-setting uh, uh, blog post, you will have kind of the goal-setting uh, course. So you find something that works, and then you mo uh, model it, and then you, of course, you you test it out. Mm -hmm. And how did you connect with these mentors? Uh, to, okay, so it started with, uh, I was just, uh, in the start, I was just like kind of flailing around, not really kind of knowing who to follow because there are like so many so-called experts. And uh, yeah, I've kind of uh, had uh, met a lot of uh, fake experts as well on the road. I will, of course, not mention any names, but it, it actually almost killed me, at least my career, because when you kind of, uh, when you're new and you hit uh, the, you meet the wrong experts and they are kind of like not giving you what you need and you kind of feel a bit ripped off. It's not very good because... How do you, it, how do you know when you're getting ripped off by a fake expert? <sighs> it's, a, it's a very good question. Uh, to be quite honest, it, in this, it, there's a saying that you don't know what you don't know. Mm. So... The thing here is that when you're new, you really don't have a clue because like, if I were just using an example, if I were to find a coach that uh, let's call him Peter and Peter was telling me about blogging, this is what you do. And uh, he had testimonials and all that kind of stuff in, on his website. It would be almost impossible for me to know if his stuff was... The, re the, the, the real deal before I had implemented and tried his stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And that is why it's so hard for uh, people who are starting out to kind of uh, to know who, who they can safely follow. So I actually wrote a blog post that on my website, which uh, yeah, is at least mentioning like uh, 33 experts that you safely can follow. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> In relation to blogging or... or yeah, uh, more like online marketing. Yeah. I mean, there is this famous saying that those who um, 
those who can't do, they teach, right? There's this yeah. famous um, <laughs> saying. So some people are just like very heavily intellectually based, but yeah. um, there is a big, there's a, like to everybody listening, there's a very big difference to physically going out and doing something than mm. intellectualizing something. You know, it's like you can visualize skydiving, but you will only know how it feels when you actually physically go out there and do it. Uh, and it's like that with all things. So that's why I always encourage people to get their hands dirty. You know, like, yeah, maybe you'll fail. Maybe you'll screw up. Maybe, you know, th but that's all part of like getting the experience, right? Absolutely. Um, and that's also why I, I, I continually, you know, uh, personally, I, I do have, you know, businesses with employees that actually generate revenue. Um, and we have all these sort of business related challenges. Uh, and then I speak about it, you know, then I, I share and I, I um, try to translate that into information for other people so that, yes, they can avoid that mistake or they can improve on whatever they're doing. But I think it's really important to have that that sort of balance of like real life and um, uh, the sort of intellectual world. Definitely. So um, with your YouTube strategy, uh, two minutes, um, what, what's a good way to, to uh, make it happen on YouTube? We, we have a YouTube channel. Um, mm -hmm. We have some traction, but I'd, I'd really like to see some more uh, traction. Like, for instance, this episode will be posted on YouTube. Uh, it's getting views. It's getting traction, but it's not, you know, it's not in the thousands. Um, so um, any, any tips for, for us? Uh, I would say that the... When it comes to launching most things, like regardless if it's a blog post, uh, an ebook, a YouTube channel, a seminar, like whatever it is, you, you have to get to the front of people with a big audience within your niche. Mm. So that is actually why I'm here speaking to you, Erland, about launching my YouTube channel, because then I can display it. On your uh, on your great podcast, and the same I will be doing actually when I'm interviewed by other people, and other people ask me to be featured as an expert on their website. I will find a uh, I will find a logical way to display that I will be launching a YouTube channel. So just mm -hmm. to get it in front of a lot of people, and in addition to that, you of course have to. Uh, yeah, just create the amazing content, but regardless of how amazing your content is, like if you don't promote it, like no one knows about it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, do you currently outsource? Are you thinking about it? Um, if yes, how are you doing it? If no, what are your concerns? Yeah, great question. So, uh, if it's if there are like small tasks that needs to be done that is not within my area of competency or I just don't have the time to do it, I just use Fiverr.com to do like small gigs, create a cover of an ebook, etc. Uh, when it comes to uh, fixing the technical issues on my website, I use uh, WP Radius that takes uh, care of everything. So I just pay them like a very a small monthly fee and they can like yeah do unlimited amount of uh, wordpress uh, customizations cool cool what was that what was the name of that company uh, uh, wp radius wp radius fantastic and that's uh, one monthly how much is the monthly fee that you're currently paying oh uh, i have to double check it uh, you want me to do it now or perhaps? No, that's all right, that's all right. Um, so it's a couple of hundred dollars or something, a hundred dollars. Oh, it's, it's nothing like that. I think it's uh, probably like $69 or something. Wow. It's like insanely cheap mm. because like I was, I'm spending like, a le I was spending at least like about uh, five to seven hours each week on like small like uh, uh, fixing uh, widgets or uh, doing like small changes, mm -hmm. and then I'm um, yeah paying someone about sixty nine dollars for a month to like do unlimited amount of changes like a no brainer. So wow. <laughs> yeah, the way the way that I um, get experts on on the, the on this show, um, actually of course I've built a system for it. This podcast is brought to you by MrOutsource.com. Outsourcing to the Philippines done for you. Um, some people I just meet, like, you know, we're in the same mastermind group. We meet once a month. 
um, in Oslo. Um, and it, guys, I recommend everybody here to start a mastermind group or be part of one. Um, just, you know, you need to be hanging out with smart, intelligent, um, proactive people and uh, surround yourself with, with talent. Um, that is number one. Um, and so basically the system that we use is that um, if I buy a book on Amazon, then that person goes on an Excel spreadsheet. And the Excel spreadsheet is like guests we want to have on the show. And then we, uh, we get that person on the show, which means I've, I've read the book, you know, I'm interested, I know about the person. Uh, and I only buy books where I'm generally interested in, in the subject, right? Like, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, we just, I just have one of my staff uh, email 10 people a day and then just like book people for the podcast. And uh, I only do podcast interviews Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, that's why we're doing this on a Tuesday. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I totally uh, systemize uh, that. Um, another thing that you also can have your outsourced staff do is actually uh, contact other business blogs so that you can be featured on other people's business blog or, or podcast mm. or uh, similar. Um, so there's also like r- routine, repetitive habits that you can have your outsourced staff work on. Um, another thing is... Um, if you have like a speaking bio, you can actually have them email your speaking bio to different events and say like, uh, Erlen is free to talk in 2016. Yeah. Um, so uh, I was just curious, um, why have you cho- are you doing any corporate work? Are you going into like companies, like your old company and like teaching them about productivity? Because I would, I would think that this would be, an, uh, it's great for entrepreneurs, but it's also, um, you know, something for, for corporations. Yeah, it's a very good question. And like, yeah, a few of the people that I, uh, of the people that are like uh, influencers, I've been sparring a little bit about them, and they are like actually a few of them who who has um, who have uh, recommended me to do what you're saying to go uh, like uh, to the business market, to the local business market, and sell my services. Hmm. But here is kind of the kicker: I have to be very strategic in, in my long-term goal, where do I want to be? Mm-hmm. So I could probably like be knocking doors and using my network in Oslo in order to sell in my services, but then I have to physically meet up and trade my, uh, my hours for mm-hmm. money. Right. So I want to do this by having, like uh, at least in the future, to have like a completely automated, automated system that lets me kind of have no restrictions regarding location. So I could be like in Thailand or in Peru or whatever, just like doing my stuff on the laptop. Mm. So that is why I'm kind of taking the hard choice now. So I'm kind of, by not doing it, I'm saying no to a lot of money, Mm. but I'm like more persistent to kind of build build my business uh, to be like uh, not the... uh, uh, restricted by location. Yeah, a lot. I mean, a lot of people think that um, if you do in-person work, like corporate work, that you have to be in the location. Um, but in this day and age, you know, we do webinars on a on a maybe weekly basis. Um, so, uh, and those are those people that are giving the webinars are often in a different country, and the people listening in are in all over the world. Um, and also like coaching you can actually do from anywhere so uh, you, you aren't actually restricting yourself by um, selling in Norway and I actually think selling in Norway is a pretty uh, good idea because what you can do is um, you can just mark yourself crazily expensive mm. you know you can say like yeah I'll do this corporate course it's this price and it's just like double the amount of other people yeah. uh, and then you, when you get it you're making a truckload of money um, and if you don't get it you know you're still positioning yourself as the hi- most highly paid productivity expert in Norway right because um, people immediately assume when something is expensive that it's the best it's just a trigger right yeah, it's true it's a really great tip but I have to ponder on that for a little bit <laughs> yeah I, I just really see this relevant for uh, like the organization that you were in you can come you can go there and say like you know, um, all these all these strategies uh, would really really work here, because you already know, and you just you get like you know thirty people in a room, and charge uh, you know five thousand dollars for a day or something, or three hours or whatever. I I definitely um, I definitely would look into that um, because it's it's pretty easy money, 
and uh, you know you're, it, you can always access that. And then the, yeah. you know, the more money you make like that, you can always like outsource a lot of the other activities that you're yeah. doing um, to to scale up uh, quicker and faster and um, and stuff like. Because it sounds like you've got a, quite a lot of routines and habits in your business right now, like contacting the experts and asking them for you know a tip on this. And then, mm-hmm. like after the blog post, like before the blog post goes live, you like contact them again and ask them to share. I mean, that's a that's a systemized, uh, habitual thing that you can actually have um, other people do for you. Yeah, I really appreciate the tip, Roland. Uh, that is why we are in a mastermind group together. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so um, I have a question. Uh, so, a lot of people on the call here will be uh, asking themselves, you know, like, it's very complicated to set up a website. You know, what about keywords and Google Analytics and buying traffic and all that stuff? Like, how, how difficult, how good were you technically when you started? And how good do you think people have to be to like launch a successful blogger like you have done? Uh, yeah, it, it's a good question. So I would say that uh, I was working as a programmer in SAP, so I, I had a, a little bit of technical skills. I could program stuff, but I didn't really want to spend a lot of time when it came to HTML and to learn all that kind of stuff. So uh, basically, I just uh, I, I could Google and do. Uh, a few things for myself because uh, I learn very fast but you, you don't really have to like know anything about any technical stuff you just have to kind of find the right people and hire someone to do it mm. uh, because basically what you really want you really just need to be focusing on to create awesome content and to help other people and to be good at connecting with influencers and be good at promoting like all that technical stuff, it can be outsourced. It's mm-hmm. like no big deal. Yeah, yeah. And how, how, have you, how has your life changed like, since you started doing this um, from like, your other job to this, this type of, of business? How, how do you feel? Um, how's your life different now? Uh, my life, it's like uh, night and day. Like Before I was uh, working crazy amount of hours, I was always... Uh, I was always stressed. I was usually uh, in a kind of. Uh, I was. Uh, I have always been very positive, but like when I was going to bed the night before going to work, I was kind of having like the thought, like, oh, oh my God, how long am I going to have to do this? <laughs> like, this is not w- uh, why I was placed on on this planet. <laughs> so. Mm. Uh, I'm more like now, it's more like uh, I do exactly what I love to do. And uh, I, got, um, I got a daughter, a baby daughter. Her name is Luna. She's about three and a half months now. Mm-hmm. So I'm also able to kind of be home uh, while working and to kind of share some of the precious moments uh, while she is growing up. So for me, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Mm. I got to ask you. Um, so it sounds like you're living the freedom lifestyle, what I call the freedom lifestyle. Um, so uh, I've got to ask you, what is the number one productivity tip um, for people running a blog? Uh, number one productivity tip for people who are running a blog would be to find out exactly what they need to do. So if you don't know what to do, you have to hire a coach in order to kind of get help to find out what you have to do. So you have to kind of identify what you have to do and then you have to just focus on it and, yeah, to put in the time to do it. So each each morning I spend, uh, like there have been research uh, showing that people are the most productive the two first hours after they get out of bed. Obviously some people are like uh, most productive in the evening or night hours, but you have to find out when you are the most productive and then you have to kind of reserve to block out those two hours every single day and constantly be working on your most income generating activities for your blog. Right, right. So um, block off two hours in the morning, focus yes. on that, get good guidance, yeah. know what you're doing. Um, yeah, I, I think like people, people don't really understand the importance of buying advice, like getting a really good, good like. 
that your business will be as good as the people you're able to attract, to attract to it. That goes for staff, that goes for mentors, that goes for people on the board. It's all about like building that tribe and that group around your business, and then that's when it skyrockets. If you try to do everything yourself, um, life is going to be really boring and really hard and really lonely. And uh, it's definitely one of the things that I did wrong in the beginning was like trying to do too many things myself and you know the consequence of that is like helping other people build their teams and and teaching and training people about you know delegation and outsourcing and building teams so uh, there you go Um, so if you want more information about you we can go to timemanagementchef.com am I right? Yeah, and uh, I will have a special uh, special gift for your awesome hardcore MBA audience. So you can go to timemanagementchef.com slash hardcore. Ooh, like <laughs> it. Fantastic. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll be adding that to the show notes as well. Awesome. Um, so, Tor, I just want to thank you so much for being on the show. This is highly valuable, and I'm really, really impressed by uh, what you're doing and all the momentum that you've managed to create in such a short amount of time. That is really, 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 I know how difficult it is to like really make it happen like that. So uh, very impressive. So guys, go to timemanagementchef.com forward slash hardcore and uh, get your free gift. Thank you, Tor. Thank you, Erland. This podcast is brought to you by MrOutsource.com. Outsourcing to the Philippines done for you. Mr. Outsource is a recruitment company matching busy entrepreneurs with Filipino virtual assistants. So you can have the time to focus on what's important. 